Welcome to Italics. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburri. On this month's show, we'll talk with John Viola, Chief Operating Officer of NIAF, the National Italian American Foundation, who stopped by the Calandra Institute to talk about the future of NIAF and Italian American culture. We'll take you to Washington, D.C. for NIAF's 38th anniversary gala, where under Mr. Viola's initiative, some new and exciting events have been added, such as the Las Vegas-style casino night. Italics correspondent Lucia Grillo reports from the ballroom of the Washington Hilton, joining honorees, the notable MCs, and celebrated guests. The weekend included some insightful panels, among which the Italian American Studies Association's Elections, When and Where Italian Americans Make a Difference, and NIAF, Ieri Oggi Domani, a lively discussion about the state of the Italian American community. Both these panels are available in their entirety on our Italics YouTube channel, Italics TV. Between the panels and festivities of the NIAF weekend, we caught up with former Congressman Frank J. Guarini and talked with him about NIAF's legacy, the state of politics, and the growing number of Italian Americans in prominent political positions. We also talked about Congressman Guarini's own philanthropy and his dedication to education. Here's Lucia Grillo at the Washington Hilton. I'm Lucia Grillo with Italics. We're the National Italian American Foundation's 38th anniversary gala. We'll take you through some of the weekend's highlights, including Come Fly With Me, Las Vegas-style casino night. We'll talk with MCs Maria Bartiromo and Joe Piscopo, as well as honorees George Randazzo, founder of the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame in Chicago, and award-winning actor-director Paul Sorvino as well as some distinguished attendees, such as 12-time MLB All-Star Mike Piazza and other distinguished guests. We're at Come Fly With Me Las Vegas-style evening with live and silent auctions. Between the tables, we'll interview some of the weekend's distinguished guests. It's always an honor, right? a, a real honor to we'll be with Maria Bartromo anywhere, of course. She's so accomplished. We always like all the great things Italian-American women do. I'm a father of three daughters. You know, it's great to have that role model so I can say to my daughters, see what you could accomplish. In every challenge I have, I reference back that this, no matter what I'm going through, it's nothing compared to what my grandparents went through. And all I would tell young people, young, young girls, just realize who you come from. These people who came here, as Gates Lee said, they threw themselves into the wind. They left the country, not to make money for themselves, but to help their families. And they worked and they worked and they worked. And that tenacity, I just feel very proud that this is my heritage. In fact, I would like to write a book <laughs> about Italian American women, the real powerhouse in America. <laughs> because we have something that nobody else has. And it's a combination of femininity, but also drive and strength. Well, I would look forward to reading that book. <laughs> <laughs> I better get busy. It's nice to be in the company of so many cultured and educated Italians, you know, because that, that's, that's the way we like to be represented. And uh, the best of our culture is the best of culture. And I grew up listening to my father playing the, and listening to the um, Italian songs, and my Aunt Mary would always have the Italian station on. And now, Giovanni Zumo, Vicino Modern. This is right out of my, when I was a little kid. Do you have a favorite um, quality of Italian, Italianness or Italian Americanness? I think our heart. We're doing it different tonight. We've made a very concentrated effort to move the foundation in a more youthful and enjoyable direction. You know, there's only so much you could do that's heavy and uh, pensive. This is about having fun. What makes you keep coming back? Well, I mean, I'm a huge uh, supporter of NIAF, and uh, I just I love what uh, what they do, and um, I think it's so important to. Uh, remember and cherish our Italian heritage. I think it's uh, authentically American to do that and, and to celebrate um, the accomplishments of Italian Americans, Americans of Italian descent, and to can continue to, to reach back to Italy and build bridges for commerce and um, 
and and improve any way we can uh, to to develop uh, you know our culture and remember our culture. So I think it's uh, something that's very very close to my heart. Now I think amongst like the people here, you might be a little unconventional, and that you like a, a certain type of music that I don't think we'll ever will no, ever no, no, hear no, no, here. No. I'm, I'm yeah, a little bit of a hard rock fan. I mean, that's what I grew up on, but. But I, I enjoy many types of music as well. Well, we, even as Italian Americans, we've got a lot of Italian Americans that are big in rock. Oh, absolutely! I mean, Ronnie James Dio and uh, many players who, uh, many musicians who, who have played uh, not only in, in rock music but pop music and whatnot. You're named after one of my favorite places in the world. Yes, we are from Calabria one of the great sections of Italy in southern Italy and I was there in June of this year and my grandparents came from there and for some reason they found out that I come from there and they made me an honorary Calabrian and all the mayor came out and gave me awards and a big plaque I was just thrilled and, and they found all the Aspromontes there and the large mountain is named after my name and, uh, oh, not after my name, but it was, it was uh, my I name. I think was, they named it after yeah. you. <laughs> my name was named after them. And, and we had a wonderful time. The food is terrific in Southern Italy. Do you have a favorite dish? No, well, I, I like all Italian food, of course, but, but they, they have this pasta that's, that is made with uh, like a, uh, a little bit of a, a flowery leaf to it. I don't know what that called. Filateri? Filateri, that's it. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> See, you know better than I do. Was that your first time in Calabria? Yes, I'm sorry to say it was, yeah. So I'm so happy that NIAF had a relationship with Calabria and asked me to come along, and I went along with them, and I had a wonderful time. Yeah. And looking forward to the excitement of the live auction. Do you have one thing in particular that you're hoping to win the bid for? Maybe one of the Vespas. September of 1977, I brought 23 world champions together for the largest assembly of world champions in one room and about 3,000 people showed up. 1978, I contacted Joe DiMaggio and said, Joe, if you accept this honor, we'll then develop the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. And 36 years later, there's over 280 athletes in the Hall of Fame. And over a period of years, we've raised millions of dollars in scholarships, and now, our programs are to help the physically challenged athletes. So we're tied into the Paralympics. You know, we grew up in a household where, you know, we would always um, have our meal, our Sunday dinner, and, you know, cherish the hard work ethic and the family values. So today, you know, we're really, we're honoring and cherishing some of the people that really embody all that all of us are so proud of in the Italian, um, uh, in the Italian tradition. You've got people that really, have made the entire community so proud uh, by really contributing to the community and contributing to the greater world. And so I, that's why I, I think I look forward to this night all year because of that. It's like a family party. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Piscopo and I do a lot together. We anchor the Columbus Parade every year, so I know him very well, and I think we have a great rapport. Um, so I think it will be a great night. Really looking forward to it. NIAF is dedicated to strengthening the ties between Italy and America. And this year has been particularly active on that front as 2013 was declared the year of Italian culture in the United States. I'm very pleased to announce a scholarship in partnership with NIAF as part of its scientific program. To think that it's possible to do a big things in the world. It's possible to take a risk. I hope to see the organization continue to grow, as I say, and I, and I, I wish everybody the very best. I, I will remember and cherish this night for the rest of my days. All of the work and the effort that all of these individuals have done over the years take such commitment and passion and time, and they've done it while doing it with integrity and such a commitment. I've always rooted for the little guy. I wanted to make sure every one of the kids that came through our programs had a chance to become anything they wanted to be. A shirt somebody gave me once that said, life is too short to go through it without being Italian. We've adopted a theme for the foundation. Ieri OG domani. Ieri. We appreciate 
the past because we respect so much the sacrifice of our ancestors. Today, we're relevant. We strive to do the best we can. Domani. Domani is the future. Thank you very much. Buonanotte. Other than honoring these people, we got to do what we do best, which is network and share experiences, go from table to table and see our friends. And that's one of the most beautiful things because we talk about family, and this is our extended family. This is our extended Italian-American family coming together every year for this event. And our hope is that this becomes that event where the community can come together. Whether you're a member of NIAP, whether you're a member of Sons of Italy, whether you're a member of Unico, it doesn't matter. This event is for you, it's for our heritage, it's for us to get together and share that a communal experience. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the National Italian American Foundation's 38th anniversary gala. For Italics, I'm Lucia Grillo. Let's go to the Calandra Institute for a visit with John Viola. John Viola is president and CEO of the National Italian American Foundation. Welcome to Italics. Thank you for having me. There has been talk about the new NIAF. We're trying very hard to build a place that we hope is accessible and uh, familiar to people, uh, that can deliver for our community and, and is responsible to our community. So we've worked very hard at changing not only our programs and practices, but our events, what they feel like, uh, how people can can access their culture with us. Some people have sort of said, why do we have three organizations, right? And things of that sort. But there really is no competition. I mean, each organization sort of has its own specialty. I'd yeah. like to see that be even further sort of, you know, driven as, as a community. I think mm -hmm. we, we certainly do have three large organizations and, and a multitude of smaller organizations that are working towards the same mission. And I think that's a great strength for our community and that you have a lot of grassroots energy out there, people that want to participate. Uh, I think after all of these years, we may have started to see some inefficiencies where we uh, recreate each other's best practices. And, and I'd like to see if we can shepherd everybody back to a focus where we're all doing somewhat different variations towards the same mission because it'll only help strengthen our community. In fact, at the last gala, you spoke to the idea of a collaboration among the organizations. An end somewhere down the line where we are in a much stronger partnership than we are now. Not just a, a sort of shared mission or some shared projects, but a real confederation of organizations that see one another's strengths and agree not to recreate them. So if I'm doing one thing well at NIAF and Sons of Italy is doing one thing well there, we're not recreating the same energies. It's clear that the idea of a greater collaboration is something that everyone sees as a productive move. Well, I've got the full support of our board of directors. Everybody's absolutely at the same place in terms of what we're looking f to, to do for our community in the future. This, that we're going to be in this together or we're not going to be in it at all because there's absolutely no way that we, our institutions, our community institutions survive a few generations into the future without a real partnership. As far as a collaboration with the academic community, um, you're really on board with that because first of all, this past gala, you guys sponsored a symposium on Italian American politics and culture in general and then Later on, when you did your second edition of NIAF Yerio Gendomani, you invited people from the American Italian Studies Association to be on that panel. And in 2015, there are two things happening, right? NIAF is moving elsewhere as far as the hotel, and you're inviting in the Italian American Studies Association. This is the first partnership that we've created in this new vision for sort of a more symbiotic community. And so the Italian American Studies Association has been a wonderful partner in providing content for our galas, uh, particularly during these Saturdays when we, we would traditionally put on conferences. And so the thinking was, well, if we can take some of the financial burden off of them over the course of their year, uh, which is really what NIAF was created to do anyway and be a steward and be a, a, a tent for all groups, in, in partnership we could also up the academic value of our content and what we would aim for, which is where we'll get in 2015 when we open this really new structure to our gala with considerably more space, uh, more akin to a community convention and gala, we can provide room for the IASA to have their full weekend conference like they do every year 
but in conjunction with ours. And now you're talking about creating an opportunity for people who care about the community to come out and, and access all different parts of it, all different groups and all different content. And that's what we're trying to create. So this is, we hope, the first of many partnerships. I think that that uh, convergence of both the sort of non-academic non and the academic community is pretty important. Oh, yeah. I think it's also important to get the so-called business community behind culture because I, I, I think what people don't realize is culture is a commodity mm. in, in various and sundry ways and that um, th that that coming together of those two communities can be much more fruitful than some people think. And I think it also sort of solves the problem that we, we sense in our community a lot of times, which is a we have a great divergence of, of resources. So when you bring the business community to our event, obviously on the whole they're there because they are accessing their culture. There's a there's a, a, a an emotional reason to be there. This is not just business. Uh, and to be able to put other organizations in front of them and other organizations that are doing different types of the same work towards the same mission, I think it's a great opportunity for us to make sure that these organizations are finding support in, in, in the community and in the people that care. And, you know, exposure is so valuable when you are working towards a mission that really is in just our little community. You know, you, you want to make sure you can turn a magnifying glass on the good works that everybody's doing. Part of what NIAF has done is contribute significantly to the advanced placement program in Italian, which we're still struggling to meet a goal, but um, NIAF has helped there, and also your grants and scholarships. One of the things we've, we've tried to do to reinvest in the AP question without having to actually reinvest is create a, a little bit of an advantage for those students who have taken the AP exam when they do apply for our scholarships. So for us, that kind of commitment to the Italian language speaks, we hope, to some commitment to the Italian culture. You have two major funds. We have multiple different uh, granting funds that we give. We have somewhere near 40 oh, bids, good. and we'll be granting uh, in December. So everybody's very excited. It's a $500,000 gift uh, to one university or institution. And then there's another $500,000 held in reserve at the foundation, which will then fund uh, scholars there, hopefully in perpetuity. I hope it means we grow our partnership with academia in the future. Let's talk about the gala. The response we've been getting is excellent. We had new events. They were fun. There was a clear sense of joy of being with one another, of mingling. And, of course, the gala dinner itself, the honorees were incredible from first to last. And just being together, it makes it for me, the most important weekend of the year for our community. So next year it's still at the Washington, Washington Hill, and the year after you're going somewhere else. Yeah, the year after will be our 40th anniversary, and so every year we've done uh, the Region of Honor theming, and as you've seen since I got there, we've tried to really make it feel like you're in the region. Uh, 2015 will be hopefully all about NIAF, its history, its future, and really our community as a whole. Well, we're looking forward to next year. We're looking forward to 2015 to, you know, pop a few bottles of champagne for the 40th anniversary. It's going to be a good party. I think that that's the whole energy is, is people happy to be there. That's yeah. what we really need. And good. I think we're getting that. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. Welcome former member of Congress and NEAF Chairman Emeritus, the Honorable Frank Guarini. Another year, another celebration. My first year I entered into Congress in 1978, and then I think it only had two or three meetings before that because the, the Italian-American leaders in both houses of Congress had gotten together, decided to have a big dinner and celebration of the occasion of Christopher Columbus. And so many people turned out to that huge dinner that it grew into what is now the National Italian American Foundation. Every Almost year. every year we had the President of the United States. And sometimes the candidate who was running and the President on the day at the same time with their wives. So it was really a very high visibility event. You have been extremely generous in your philanthropy towards Italian American culture in general, but specifically public policy and things of that sort. You have sponsored programs here at the NEAF weekend over the years uh, on public policy forums, on public policy. And on Capitol Hill as well. And on Capitol Hill as well. Also in New York, there have been forums in New York that the Frank Guarini mm -hmm. forum on public policy. 
And you've also crossed the ocean, which is wonderful. You are involved with John Cabot University. Oh, it's a lovely little college in Trastevere, the old part of Rome. People coming from 66 different nations, and half the students are four-year students, the other half are study abroad students, and they learn from each other, not only in the classroom, but in being together, even in the time that they spend there, in the dormitories, in the dinner, et cetera, learning about the culture, the traditions, the histories of other cultures. The world is global today. I was at the UN for a while, and I can tell you that it was an experience being with people from all these different civilizations mm -hmm. and cultures. Uh, but when you're young and you're exposed to it, John Cabot University really has given a remarkable service to our young people. You funded the Frank Guarini Institute for Public Policy. Yeah, right, but uh, it was Max Rabb, the ambassador from the United States to, to Rome, that got me involved because he was involved and Peter Secchi was involved also. They both served on a board at the same time with me. So we really had some very, very leading people, as we do today. Mm -hmm. It's an outstanding board, and uh, everyone is given to the excitement of being in Rome and be being doing, able to do so much for education for students from every corner of the earth. And you're now chairman of the board, Just correct? recently. Yes, yeah. chairman of the board of directors of... But I've County. been on the board for many years. Yes. The Italian-American vote. The Italians are very independent and uh, fiercely independent, <laughs> and uh, as a result, uh, one-third stick with the Democratic Party, and a third stick with the Republican Party, and, th and one-third don't want to have anything to do with <laughs> any of the parties. They're totally independent, and in a primary, you don't nominate uh, a candidate effectively, so that it really has militated against us in the system we have of government in our Constitution. Yeah, but we so still we survive very, very well. Really? We still have very good representation. We ha still have some very good men, past and present. We had an Italian American who was Speaker of the House. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi. Three beats very away proud from of her. three beats away from the president. That's right. right. She's Harvey's third in, in line. I, I think everybody is that. proud of their mm -hmm. heritage, mm -hmm. regardless of where they come from, because uh, that's their roots, mm -hmm. and uh, you can't help but have some feeling for uh, where you, your grandparents and your forefathers came from. And of course, that's what America is all about. We really come from every part, every country in the world, and uh, we really have a great respect for our traditions and our ancestry. Uh, but that shouldn't be the only reason why people should vote. They should really vote because of good government, what people <laughs> represent. And I think that the Italian-Americans, like other groups, mm -hmm. uh, generally would turn down a candidate if they found that he didn't uh, measure up. Uh, and I, I'm sure the, the fierceness of the Italian independent of spirit, they particularly feel that way. You have done some really important things with regard to Italian culture. But a great deal in culture. education because yes, I love exactly. and that's the future of our country. And I was going to mention New Jersey University. City University right. in Jersey City. And you also were very generous with regard to getting the advanced placement exam in Italian back up. You were the individual who stepped up to the plate. And it is our heritage. Mm -hmm. And I feel that way about every nationality. What makes America so great is that we borrow not only from our own heritage, but from everybody else's uh, ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Because their heritage, et cetera, combined together, makes what America is all about. It creates what America is. Amongst the many events at the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute are its documented Italians, Writers Read, and Philip V. Canistrato seminar series. Two of these events from autumn 2013 are now viewable on our Italics YouTube channel, Italics TV. Fred Gardaface sits down with author Christopher Castellani, who reads from his latest book, All This Talk of Love, and Dr. Joseph Sciorra talks with producer Todd Cambio, playing selections from Paese Mio Bello, a double CD compilation of early 20th century U.S. recordings of Italian music. Ilica's annual conference and gala were held on November 7th and 8th. Lucia Grillo speaks with ILICA President Vincenzo Marra and this year's honorees. I've been looking forward to these uh, couple of evenings for uh, quite some time. The sense of this uh, conference, what is to be Italian today? So no one of us can hold the exclusivity of being. We all together can create the new Italian. And for this, we are promoting 
the young people. You had quite a grouping of great minds from both sides of the pond here tonight. What did you expect from this event, and did it work out the way you wanted it to? It can be better all the time. I mean, it will be better the next year, the next time, but certainly these people are just like lights in the darkness that is surrounding our communities today. In other words, we have to be courageous and say, look, it's not going too well as we want it to. Do we really matter? Because you say during the conversation, do we really matter? We don't matter anymore, and that's our problem. Mm -hmm. In other words, how do we go back to matter? We have to start and raise the bar. Raise the bar means to give voice to those who sold 11 million books altogether. Mm -hmm. They meet. We listen to them, because at the end of the day, the crisis became cultural, but it started out economical. <laughs> ILICA is a very impressive organization that has a very important mission that is helping us understand better what it means to be an Italian-American, what true Italian identity uh, is. I think there's a message here for all Italian-Americans uh, that we need to do more. It's a great honor to be here and receive this award. I'm very happy to receive it in the year of the culture Italian in the States. It's beautiful, anche perché ho dedicato gran parte della mia vita alla, alla diffusione della lingua italiana nel mondo e della cultura italiana nel mondo, quindi uh, è, un, è, è davvero una grande gioia. Ho lavorato con Elica da principio. Lo conosco, Vincenzo, Marwa, uh, quasi 40 anni. Quando ho visto Elica, well, I was expecting something like this. And finally, uh, I said to Vincenzo, you have done a tremendous job, I will be with you all through. some insightful and exciting news for students. The Calandra Italian American Institute is pleased to announce the publication of a directory of college scholarships available for Italian American students and students of Italian studies. For further details, go to qcpages.qc.cuny.edu slash Calandra and click on the Education tab. For high school students in New York City and the boroughs, submit your poetry for publication in the 10th annual anniversary edition of Il Giornalino, the Italian Journal, and the chance to read your entry on an episode of Italics. For more information, contact joseph.grosso at qc.cuny.edu. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Italics. Tune in to our next episode of Italics, airing December 25th. This special holiday episode, Italic's first ever culinary segment, will feature traditional Italian-American and Italian holiday meals and centuries-old recipes that mirror contemporary meals catered to the health and environmentally conscious. Lucia Grillo brings us into the kitchen with food historian Francine Sagan, Chef Jay Astafa, and others. Watch previous editions of Italic's online at cuny.tv slash show slash italics. We'll leave you with some music from Lise and Lori Brigantino from their recent gig in New York City's East Village. I'm Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata. I'll stand here by the doorway watching as you go.